Galatians chapter 6, we're going to look at verses 7 through 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. The title of the message is, God will not be mocked, you reap what you sow. God will not be mocked, you reap what you sow. Amen. God will not be mocked, you reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you first of all for our salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on hell and cross to wash all our sins away, past, present, and future. Amen. Thank you for the indwelling Holy Spirit, whereby we are still to the day of redemption. We ask you, Lord God, for any souls that do not know where they, where they are going to go after they die. Lord God, please let today be the day of salvation. Lord God, so let them be comfortable until they know you as their own personal Savior, Lord. Yes. We ask you that you fill Pastor Jim with your Holy Spirit, give him the liberty and the authority from on high to declare your word unto us. Yes. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to be swayed by the things that are happening outside or things that are happening in our lives currently, but help us to wholly give ourselves unto you and your word. We thank you for being so good to us every single day. We don't deserve your mercy or grace. Help us not to take things for granted. Help us to always be thankful. Thank you. Thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for the brethren. And we ask you that you will be with us and that you will receive all the glory and honor. Protect us from temptation and devil's attacks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God will not be mocked. You reap what you sow. There's a lot of sayings out there where it says, you know, what goes around comes around. You hear it all the time. You hear about karma, you hear about every action has a reaction, and every action has its own consequences. Where are they all deriving from? It's deriving from God's law. As we saw in chapter 6, verse 7, be not deceived. And it's a command. You shouldn't be deceived, right? When it comes to sin, you should not be deceived. There's no reason for you to tell me and tell God and tell everyone else that I didn't know. You know ignorance is not going to save you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. You know, this day and age, the common characteristic of the whole world and this world system, which is controlled by the devil, they love to mock God. They love to mock what God has created. They love to mock all this, you know, nature. They love to mock human beings as a man and woman. Man, especially in this California, it's ridiculous that, you know, child can be told by a teacher what you are, and you don't have to tell your parents. And if your parents is in any way, you know, abusive to you, any lecture is considered abuse now, and then taken away from your parents. Man. To me, that's, that's like communism. Yeah. There's no freedom anymore. But especially in California, God is not mocked. But people are continually mocking God. Yes. If they knew this verse, Galatians 6, 7, and they have, had it in their heart, even if they're saved or not, they'll behave differently. Yeah. They will make sure to honor God. Think about it, people who doesn't even know God, people who may not even be saved out in the jungles of Amazon, out in the jungles of Nile, they give more fear, honor, and reverence to Almighty God. True. Then people here, especially in America, 
who's educated, who could read, who has a, some, you know, all kinds of information out there, but they continue to mock God, and they think they could get away with it. You and I can never get away with what we sow. Amen. What goes around completely comes around. Yes. That's why even though there are injustices out there that we see all the time, don't worry about it. Yes. God's going to take care of it. Amen. That's why there's judgment after death. Yes. Right? You could see some gangsters, mobsters, politicians, crooked people, they kill people, enjoy their lives, never have to pay for their sins during their lifetime. Sure. That's what you see, yeah. but you don't know what's going on inside of them, right? right? They might be dying inside. Yes. You know, they might have some incurable diseases out there, cancers. Right. But at the judgment seat of, I mean, at the judgment, especially if they don't get saved, yeah. you know, they're going to have a fire waiting for them. Yes. Eternal lake of fire. Hell's going to be waiting for them. Amen. So that's why God is such a fair God. That's why it makes no sense for anybody to not trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. Why would you want to take chance? Because at the judgment, white throne judgment, God's going to play your life. Yes. And especially at that judgment, people who rejected Jesus Christ, every single time when they rejected Jesus Christ, you'll be played. Yes. On a, you know, universal screen. Yeah. And no one will ever have any excuses. Amen. They'll come up with every excuse. Oh, you know, I was too tired. You know, I, I, didn't, I wasn't feeling good that day. You know, the circumstances, right? Yeah. All those things. But Lord said, you had a chance. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. You know, when Lord, you know, is going to judge people, a lot of times it's going to just come down to simple. Yeah. Yes or no? Right? Amen. Did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes or no? Yes. I mean, did you serve me after you got and saved? Yes or no? Yes. I mean, for each instances and each cases. Right. So, Bible says, God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you're going to harvest something in your life and after life. For many people, you are harvesting certain things that you have sown. Because God is very fair. A lot of people think that after you get saved, everything you've ever done before you've gotten saved is good. You know, forgiven, forgiven wise, it's completely forgiven. Yes. One sin for all. So after you've gotten saved, everything that you've done up to that point, it doesn't even count, right? right? But what you have done, though, to your body, you have to pay for it. Yes. For example, you smoke all your life. You smoke, you're a heavy smoker, two pack a day, three pack a day. And you got saved like when you're like mid-40s, 50s. Yeah. And you've been smoking since you're 15. That 30 years, not going to just suddenly disappear. You might, you know, you might have gotten those cancers, right? Yes. You might even lose your voice. That's the harvesting that people do have to go through. If you are abusing your bodies with drugs in your earlier days, and then you start losing you know, memory, you, know, you can't really comprehend, you know, that's all the byproduct of what you've done in the past. Yes. It's God's law. You reap what you sow. That's why even though the world often tries to Treat sin very lightly. Mm -hmm. ah, it's okay. You know, how many times have you heard, white lies are okay? Oh, yeah. No lies ever okay. Right. Yeah. You can't teach your children that, hey, yeah. it's okay to lie. It's never okay to lie. Yeah. Right? They're saying, oh, yeah, it's okay to meet somebody, you know, outside of your marriage because you're struggling. It's never okay. Yeah. Right? Right. Oh, it's okay, you know, you get emotional, you could hit somebody here and there. No. It's never okay. No. Oh, oh, yeah, you know, you had a bad day, so you take it out on your children, and you abuse your children verbally and physically. No. It's not okay. No. It's never justify the means, they say. Right. Just because, oh, I take care of my wife, I take care of my husband, I take care of my children, so it's okay. In between, I could be rough with them. It's never okay. Amen. 
you cannot treat sin lightly. Ignoring sin will inevitably have results on you and people around you. People don't know that. So point number one, you have to sow with sincerity. You have to sow with sincerity because you will reap with certainty. You're going to reap with certainty. You're going to harvest certainly. And it's a universal law. That's why, you know, the, one of the worst things that I could ever see happen to anybody from young to old is people getting bullied, right? People, you know, a lot of children's lives get messed up. Like in elementary school, kindergarten, and obviously middle school and high school, they get bullied, right? Yeah. And many times they don't tell their parents about it. And then they grow up and, you know, their parents are thinking, wow, what happened to my child? Such a bright child, but now they always are gloomy and dark and stuff, right? Those things, so on the other side of the fence, if you ever bully people, you're going to reap what you have sown, right? If you haven't been bullied by people, God's going to reward that person as well. But you have to understand, if you are a type of person who has made other people's life miserable, whether you're Christian or not, and especially if you're Christian, God will make sure that you reap what you have sown. Amen. That's why you have to think about every action that you take. That's mocking God as a Christian. How can you as a Christian who's in the body of Christ start gossiping, hurting, you know, making a mess out of your brothers and sisters in Christ. What do you think is going to happen? If you mock God, God will make sure you pay. You know what's the scary thing about God? God is so scientific. When it comes to numbers and analytics, he's perfect. When it's the perfect time for you to suffer for what you've done, God's going to make it happen. Well, too many people are naive. They think that, okay, I done this a few years ago. I committed it. I committed this sin. Nothing has ever happened to me. Thank God for his grace and mercy. You're fooling yourself. Yes. Even if you have gotten right with the Lord, the Lord's going to have to make sure that you be judged for what you have done. Don't be naive that, okay, it hasn't happened to me five years. 10 years, unless the Lord comes back soon, it's going to happen to you. How foolish you and I, always thinking that we could get away with it. You know, in the sight of human beings, in the sight of certain laws, maybe, you could get away with it. But in the sight of God, you could never get away with it. Amen. All the hate that you have for your brothers and sisters in Christ, and you never gotten right with the Lord, you're going to pay for it. Yes. That's why you can't be hypocritical you can't be fake. We have too many fake Christians out there. Yes. Both ways. They're not even saved, they act like Christian. They're saved, but they don't act like Christian. Right. Wow. I mean, both of them, yeah. right? So they think that, okay, I smile, shake your hand, you know, every Sunday, and you're okay with it. You're not. Because behind their back, you start gossiping, you start talking bad about them, you start judging their dresses, right? I mean, you have to dress moderately, but who are you to start telling everybody, you know, that so-and-so should never dress like that. That so-and-so shouldn't have an earring, right? That could be a person who just gotten saved. They're just baby. They don't know anything. Yeah. Are you going to tell your baby, hey, you need to start chowing down on this ribeye steak. <laughs> You're going to kill your baby, right? They need time to grow. You yourself is still growing. Think yeah. about it. Amen. Can any Christian say that I've finished growing? Never. No. You're continuously growing. So stop criticizing your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. I mean, I, mean, I don't even have to say you, you got to stop Christ criticizing leaders of the church. I mean, think about all the people who were going against Moses, right? You know, they saw their days, right? 
you know, as long as no, there's no human being that's perfect, I say all the time. But roles are different. If God has put person at certain places because their heart is right to serve the Lord, just let it be, right? And then if you have something to talk about it, instead of sowing these sins in your life about, you know, talking bad about people behind their back, just talk to them. Just resolve it on the spot. You're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. You're going to see each other for all eternity in heaven. Why would you not want to talk to each other about it? I know people are introvert. I know people are extrovert. I know people are in between. But when there are issues, you have to resolve it. Amen. And if you are that bully, and you know who you are. You could be bullied to your wife. You could be bullied to your husband. You could be bullied to your children. And you could be bullied to your parents and everything in between. Right. You better get right with the Lord. Yes. Lord will not ever get you get away with it. Lord definitely judges people who hurt God's people. Just remember that, yes. right? I mean, you, you, you know, we have Brother Fred who was in the ministry for many, many years. You read Dr. Ruckman's I mean, commentaries and things that happened during his ministry. You see Pastor Kim and you know, all the years that I've been in the ministry. No one ever got to get away when they hurt God's people. And if you have hurt God's people, you have to really get right with the Lord. You know, it's not just a little, little saying, oh, Lord, I'm sorry I hurt that person. No. You seriously have to go back to what you have done, ask Holy Ghost to help you remember, yes. and make sure that you get on your knees. You know, those are the times when the true tears usually comes out. Yes. Because you look at yourself as a sinner on their way to hell. God saved you from hell. And you yourself don't even realize that, hey, I'm like less than nothing. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Thank God for his mercy. Who am I? Who was I to be so critical, put down my husband, my wife, my children, and my brothers and sisters in Christ? See, Christian families could be a lot better if you truly know who you are. Right. You're just sinner saved by grace. Thank God for his mercy. Yes. You pray for others. I, I mean, again, downright if they're at church, you know, being a bad testimony, you know, I mean, that's why pastors are there to deal with it. But if you see certain things happening with your brothers and sisters in Christ, instead of calling each other, setting up a text, you know, chat, you know, start criticizing and, you know, gossiping with others, pray for them. Yeah. Pray. Because people who say, I never will do what they're doing, you're the exact person who's going to do it yeah. within a day or two, yeah. week or month, you know. That's why, I, you know, one of the words that I always avoid is never, except I'm never going to burn in hell because I trusted Jesus Christ. Right. You know, I never doubt that King James Bible is the perfect word of God. Amen. You know? So with God, there's a lot of nevers. That's true. But with us, it's not. Because we're just a human being. Yeah. We could always go down. So if you are to sow with sincerity, you're going to reap with certainty eternal rewards if you do it for the Spirit, right? If we, let's go down to the Word of God today, Galatians chapter 6. Look at verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh. Think about it. You know, everybody wants to invest in good things. America is all about investment, right? That's why when stock market goes down, the whole, whole country is like panicking, right? When stock market does well, whole panic, whole country is like happy, right? But we have to remember our investment should focus on heavenly things, Amen. not on earthly things. Because if you are sowing, verse 8, for he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit. So any sinful thing that you do, you are sowing to your flesh. It says his. It's yours. Yeah. But when you are sowing to the spirit, right, you're sowing for the Holy Ghost, for God. Amen. Isn't that the best thing? Yes. You know, I'm sure we have parents here. When your children are doing things for you, genuinely out of their love for you, 
as a mom and as a dad. That's probably the greatest joy you ever have. That's why people have children. That's why people have family. Because they, that's like something you can never forget, right? Yes. Even if it happened once in their life, then their parents are like, man, I, I'm so proud of my son. I'm so proud of my daughter. At that time, without any reservation, you know, they did it for me out of their love, right? And it lasts forever. I never heard anybody who said, that's the worst thing my child did for me. No. They remember and remember. But when your child does everything for their own fleshly desires, yeah. man, you also remember, but it's not good, right? right? You know, they're doing drugs in their body. It's ruining them. Yes. But it hurts you too because you're the parent. Yes. A lot of times Christians don't understand that God has feelings. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know. You disappoint Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you, and God the Father, right? Yeah. The whole Trinity, you're disappointing them. Each time you sow to your flesh. And the Lord's not going to be this Calvinistic God who's going to just tell you to you know, stop you know, or like that in that way. He will use the word of God, the preaching, the prayers to warn you and let you know. But you and I have free will. At the end of the day, we make the choice yeah. to sow to our flesh or sow to the spirit. But if you've been sowing to your flesh all these years, that sowing to the flesh harvesting is inevitable. And that's why it's so scary. You've been, you've been you know, building up your sin over and over and over. Over and over and over. And many times it's the same sin that you're doing over and over and over. Yes. Children disrespecting your parents over and over and over, right? Husbands mistreating your wives over and over and over. You know, wives not submitting to a godly husband over and over and over, over and over and over, right? And then what's going to happen? Lord says it's time. And when Lord takes actions, it's very swift right. in a twinkling of an eye. Before you know it, it hits you. And that harvesting is waiting for you, Christian. Why do you not do with sincerity? And why do you not do, you know, sowing to your spirit? I mean, sowing, so I think about it. If this side is full of trash and dung, right? And this side is full of clean things, right? We know that we should be on this side. But because you love your flesh so much, because you can never wake up, Christian. No. You just don't wake up. Bible says be sober, be vigilant. Right. Because your adversary, the what? Uh, Devil. Yes. Is roaming. Whom he may devour. And then you're like, oh, I'll play here. It's like a little child. Because there's no parental care, or because it's a bad child, you know, a disrespectful child at the zoo. They just jump the fence into a lion's den yeah. and thinking that I'm okay. That's what a lot of Christians are doing. Right. They're staying in the lion's den, tiger's den, whatever the you know, bear's den, yeah. right? They're just playing. They think that I'm not going to have any consequences. And imagine if those animals get hungry <laughs> and they smell blood. Ooh, they don't care. Right? I mean, they destroy their own owners. You know, you hear those horror stories. Yeah. So you have to understand that God cannot be mocked. Amen. Every time you commit sin, remember you're mocking God. Every time you commit sin, remember that you're going to have to harvest. You have to reap. And every time you pursue your sinful desires, you will reap corruption. I mean, the Bible says, be holy for I am holy. Do you not realize that if you don't stay holy, you can never be perfectly holy, right. but you strive to serve the Lord so that you could be holy? Yes. Then you, your actions will make sure that it will have a far greater result. You know, when you sow a seed, does it stay like that, that little tiny seed? No, it grows. 
I mean, you've seen some at your own gardens. You know, you sow some seed to a plant, you know, to fruits, right? It grows and it bears many, many fruits. We're happy, right? If you have like a lemon tree, you know, a lime, you know, you have, you know, tomato, you have grapes, strawberries. It didn't start like that right away. Right. It started with the seed. If you sow your fleshly desires, it's going to grow. Can you imagine what happens if you lied about certain things to your husband or to your wife, and it's already sown now? Yes. You live your life hiding it. It's growing. Yeah. It's growing. It's like, you know, your wife isn't that tall yet, right? To see, I mean, I don't know, what's a woman's average height? Like 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, right? Or in between, right? Or I don't know, it maybe depends on the races too. Just say you're, you know, you're at average height. You can't really see, you know? But this sin that you've sown is growing right now, yeah. growing. And you have never gotten down on your knees and gotten right with the Lord. So it's not stopping. No. It's growing bigger. Like See, if you actually confess your sins and get right with the Lord, you're not going to reap as big. You're not going to, you know, harvest 100 apples yeah. of sin. You'll probably, you know, invest maybe, you know, 25, hopefully, you know, <laughs> as low as a number as you can get. But it's still growing. So and you don't, you're not doing anything about it. So many Christians like yourself are not doing anything about your sins right now. Amen. So if it's this you committed sin against your wife, husbands, you know, I'm telling you because I'm a husband too. And then what happens? Man, this thing has suddenly, overnight, it grew two feet. <laughs> your wife is like standing here and looking at it. Whoa, what is that? You say you take care of it years ago, months ago. Yeah. Why is it showing? Why does it have too many fruits? Man, now you're going to either, you have two choices. Just receive deserving, deservedly the punishment, get right, or you're going to try to give excuses and make this thing grow bigger, yeah. right? Last thing that a man, head of the household, should ever do is give excuses. Right. I mean, if a man, as head of the household, you know, is right with the Lord, usually, you know, wives will follow. Lord said it that way, hierarchy. Because head of the home is what? Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So there's Lord Jesus Christ, you know, there's father, you know, there's mother and children. So don't stop blaming your wife and your children, fathers. It's you. You're the problem. Amen. If you're right with the Lord, if you do your best, 9 out of 10, your wives will follow. Yes. They're weaker vessel. Instead of always saying, oh, my wife is such a nagger, you give a chance and open opportunities for them to be a you know, nagging person because of you. You know, one time I said it again. At the blowout, you know, a month ago, you know, Brother Carter, you know, from Arkansas was giving his preaching, and he said, or testimony, one or the other, he said, you know, when my wife acts up, when things aren't going well, instead of blaming that person, I always look at myself. Because if I'm straight, if I'm good, and if I'm right in the Lord, then everything works out. So you husbands have to understand you have to sow with sincerity yes. because too many families in America are just breaking apart, right? Yeah. I mean, divorce rate in America is, I don't even know now. It used to be 50%, now it's like 60, 70. I mean, look at young kids like MZ, YZ, you know, PP generations. They're like, I don't like you. Right. Sign the paper. They're 30 years old, and they've been divorced already five times. They're, they have no remorse at it. Yeah. Oh, no, irreconcilable you know, differences. 
What is that? Because one person likes to wake up early and other person likes to sleep in. One person likes this type of food and other person doesn't like this type of food. And you make that a ground for your divorce. And that's the type of society we're living in. Yeah. Nobody with any standard, nobody with backbones. That's why nobody understands that God will not be mocked. Your actions will have consequences. Have you ever thought about all the thoughts that you're having right now will be judged? Every thought, every dirty thought, every wicked thought, every hateful thought, every lazy thought, every wrongful thought, God will judge everything inside of you that's going on. That's a scary thing. How many thoughts do you and I go through on a daily basis? Thousands. I mean, it's constantly going. Yeah. Constantly going. So you have to understand that harvest is inevitable for some of us. It is going to happen. Some of them, it's going to happen sooner than later. That's how you have to get right with the Lord. Amen. You have to sow with sincerity, and you have to understand that you are going to reap with certainty. If I mistreat a brother or sister in Christ, it's certain that I'm going to harvest that. The Lord has to. He's fair God. But other way around, you know, I'm going to point number two. So point number one, you sow with sincerity, you reap with certainty. Point number two, you sow selflessly, and you reap supernaturally. You know what? We serve supernatural God, right? The Almighty God. Amen. This God that we serve created the universe. Yes. God that served preserve the word of God. This God that we serve has saved us from hell Amen. just by trusting him yes. with all of our heart plus nothing. Glory to God. Don't you think that when you are serving him, he's going to reward you in certain ways? Spiritually, you know, sometimes, you know, physically, mentally, you know. God will one day bloom that seed that you have sown for him. Well, wouldn't that be a greatest day? Yeah. And sometimes we see it by grace of God, right? Man, how many people have you led to the Lord, right? If you have opportunity, you have to take that opportunity. Yes. You are able to lead someone to the Lord, and that's a great investment you've done. Yeah. I mean, Hugh Pyle led Dr. Ruckman to the Lord. Man, that seed just went blossom without even knowing. I mean, the man read Bible 24 times first year. Amen. They got saved. Amen. I mean, we barely, we rarely read like a once throughout the whole year, right? I mean, a special case, right? But because of you, you know, you're sowing selflessly where every deed that you do is not for your own glory, but it's for God's glory, yeah. right? I mean, you do it as unto the Lord and not unto man. That's why I say every quarrel, every fight that you can ever have within your family, whether it's husband, wife, children, parents, grandpa, grandpa, and cousins, it can all be resolved very quickly if you treat it like if you're doing it unto the Lord. Are you going to continue to argue with the Lord Jesus Christ who is in front of you? Like your husband did something wrong. You're like, Blah, 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 blah. I mean, the Lord's like, okay, I have compassion on you. You know, will you have compassion on me? Yeah. I die for all your sins. I shed my precious blood. Ah, if you say it that way, Lord, I mean, I can't really say anything. Right. Right? I mean, you save me from hell, yeah. right? When was the last time you were that selfless as a Christian? Not just in front of people. Again, right. don't stop thinking about people's eyes, right? Yes. When was last time you were really selfless when people weren't watching, right? Yeah. Are you a selfless husband? Or do you have to make sure that your wife puts, you know, three meals a day, you know, even they're working hard, you know, they have to wash everything, wash their dishes, make sure that there's no crease on your shirt and stuff. Are you that type of husband? Or wife? Like, yeah, man, he's got to give me more, more, more. More, you know, I'm, I'm the husband. And your children, well, I need the latest and greatest 
game system, laptop, TVs, you know, phones, you know, iPhone 1000, you know, I'll be the first one to need to get it so that I could tell my peers that I have the greatest and the best. How selfish are you? How selfish is me, right? When we are always, we're just talking and thinking about what can I get? What can I get? What can I receive? What can I receive? Man, such a bad mentality, especially for a Christian to have. Yes. It is better to give than to receive. Well, the Bible says it, but we don't take it to heart. That's what we're always thinking. What can that preacher give me outside of, you know, just preaching hard to me, but, you know, it's going to give me more recognition, right? You know? I don't want any of our members and then listeners to feel like, oh, yeah, how come he's not talking about me? I don't need to talk about you. It's better that I don't talk about you if you did something good. Amen. The Lord will talk about it at the judgment. Yes. Right? Then you have more rewards. Right? Just do it selflessly. Right? Yes. You know, if a brother or sister need help, just help them. Don't think that I, uh, okay, you're looking at your clock. When are they going to acknowledge? Right? But they say, thank you to me. That's not enough. I mean, human being, they're like, it's not enough. They have to start telling all their friends so that, you know, <laughs> There's a brother Jason's laughing, <laughs> and then you know, but Vogel. Oh, did you hear? You know, I did something good, and then his reaction, and he's hoping that, yeah, I already heard. You know, people are already talking about it. You know, that's not the attitude and approach that you should have. The life that you sow into the spirit is far behind, far beyond what people can see. Yeah. It's eternal. Right? That's why you pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why you try to lead anybody, anyone to the Lord, whether people see or not. Yeah. Right? Because that will show, you know, God will do the harvesting. How many times, you know, have you left a track at somewhere? And then out of the blue, they're reading your track. Imagine they get saved and they come up to you. Because if you ever witness for the Lord, if you ever pass that track, I guarantee you, if you did at least a few times, someone in heaven's going to knock on your shoulder. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. Because of that track, because of what you said on the street preaching, because of what you said to somebody I overheard, yeah. I got saved. Amen. And that is going to be the greatest joy any Christian will ever have. Amen. That's why you have to sow selflessly because you reap supernaturally. And the third one, Let's look at Galatians chapter 9. I, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. I'm pretty sure you guys are saying, where's chapter 9? You know, this guy is using the wrong Bible, right? No, no, no. Well, everyone was already looking at verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. At least you guys are paying attention. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. So thirdly, you and I have to sow steadfastly because we will reap in season. It's going to happen, brethren. I know it gets hard. Devil's not going to let you have an easy way. Each time you do something for the Lord, you sow to the Spirit, devil's going to do his best to make everything look tedious, everything look boring, everything look worthless. But you have to continue. You have to continue. Why? Because... If you don't stop and continue, the Bible says, in due season, you know, you will reap. That's why you have to continue as a Christian. We're soldier for Jesus Christ. We're in a spiritual battle. Yeah. You have to go at it every single day. Amen. We're not in best condition every single day, I'll tell you that. Amen. Certain days, you don't want to read the Bible. Certain days, you don't want right. to pray. Certain days, you don't want to do Bible study. Certain right. days, you don't want to witness. Amen. But steadfast means that you do it whether you like it or not. Yes, sir. I mean, for many people, when you're hungry, you eat it whether you like it or not. Because you're hungry, yeah. right? We're not hungry enough spiritually. That's good. That's how we are. Yeah. We're so full spiritually, yeah. you know, mis misguided by our own fleshly desires. Right. We're like, you know, I'm full spiritually. I read my Bible two months ago. No, I'm good. I really pray like 
you know, about a week ago, so I'm okay, you know. I passed that track, street preaching, you know, a week ago. In between, it's just my time, me time, me time. You know, people, when going gets tough, as they say, they fold. Yes. They fold like cheap aluminum <laughs> out there in the hot sun, right? Or melting away, you know. All right, right now, we have some fire going on, so we have to pray for everyone's safety, yes. you know. I mean, that fire smells really bad. Yes. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone, you know, smelled it outside. It's not good for anybody. But think about it. You know, would you guys have not come to church just because of the smell of the fire? No, you still came. Yeah. Because it's more important. Amen. Right? Word of God is more important. Yes. Worshiping him together yes. is more important in a local church. So yes. you came. So it is doable, and you are doing it. And I'm sure you want to please the Lord, and you find strength in the Lord, Jesus Christ, according to Philippians 4.13. I can't do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Then you have to continue. you got to continue and continue and continue. And you cannot let your emotions take over. Because our emotions are so volatile, so fickle up and down, like a roller coaster. Yeah. Man, sometimes our emotions are so good, I want to go out there and preach the word, pass out tracts, read the Bible, like 100 chapters today. But sometimes your emotions are so down because of the things of the world. You don't want to do anything. You want people to leave you alone and stuff. But you cannot let your emotion be the boss of your life. Right. you got to let the Holy Spirit be the boss. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. When Satan tries to discourage you, it makes sin, you know, seem easier and easier to do. You can't lose your heart. You got to resist it. You got to submit yourself. You know, I mean, you, if you submit yourself to the Lord, you could resist the devil anytime, anytime. When your anger try to get a hold of you, you submit yourself to the Lord. Lord, just be honest with the Lord. Lord, man, I'm an angry person. I can't deal with this on my own. I need your help. Please help me to get through this. And the Lord's gonna help you. Right? Like, Lord, my, I'm, I, this, this graphics, you know, this stuff, man, it keeps me, you know, tempted. Lord, how much to get rid of it once and for all? And then you just get rid of it. And then when it tries to come back, you just rely on the Lord. If you continue to sow in this field that God has given you to sow, you're going to be rewarded. It is assured. But how many Christians so steadfastly, without any stopping. You can't stop, right? For children to grow the best way, they have to grow continuously. I haven't seen a child, you know, who was like this small when they're one, and then suddenly, you know, five years later, right, they're suddenly a lot bigger than anybody else just because they were malnutrition and suddenly they got a lot of food. Normally it doesn't happen right. because they're already so malnutrition and they weren't able to grow. Yes. And they stunt their growth once and for all. Yes. I mean, think about North Korea, right? They have no food. So children, they're like, you know, 12, but they're smaller than six-year-old kids at our country, right? Because they have no nutrition. And they lost all that time when they were able to grow. Yeah. Christians, you have your time to grow. Don't be naive thinking that, oh, yeah, you know, I could grow next month, next year. No. What do you know? You, can you predict the future? No. You think that you're going to be suddenly start hopping on and doing things for the Lord because you set a date, you know, starting October 1st, I'm going to truly serve the Lord? It never works like that. So you have to start today. Yes. And you have to start sowing staff fastly. Amen. And then lastly, you, know, you have to sow for the souls. Lost souls out there. Amen. And you reap salvation's fruit. That's what we want. At the end of the day, you and I should be testimony, light of the world to this lost world out there. Yes. So that souls can get saved. Many people don't ever read the Bible. You know your co-workers, they don't care about the Word of God. But they might know you're a Christian. Yes. 
you're the only Bible they'll ever read, as you've heard many, many times. True. And they're going to be like, let me see. Let's see. Let's see how John's working today. <laughs> Diligent. Doesn't cuss. Doesn't cuss at all. Always, you know, modest. Always helps in need. You know, okay. Let me see. I want what he has. And then God gives opportunity and you witness to John. He has open heart and he gets saved. Amen. That's what you want, right? It's not always that one, two, three, but it can be done. But if you love the lost souls out there, you're going to start sowing for those lost souls. Yes. Right? You're going to pass out tracts more. You're going to witness more. At every opportunity to preach the word of God, you're going to do it. Yes. I mean, that is the greatest investment a human being can ever make. Making investment for the lost souls out there. Because you and I are here today because someone else went out of the way to sacrifice to witness to us. Yes. It could be your parents. It could be some of your friends. It could be some random person, right? Yes. Without them, you and I wouldn't be here. Right. God uses people to do his will. Thank you, Lord. You and I can be that tool that God can be used. Amen. God can use, right? Yes. Then don't let it go out of the way. That's why, look at verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So every opportunity. Take every opportunity, brethren. Yes. Don't just wait for a golden opportunity. Don't just wait for a perfect opportunity. Every opportunity. You want to do something good unto all men, lost people, and especially to save people, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. You know, did you ever realize just saying hi to somebody lightens up their day? Just saying hi. Hi. I mean, or, you know, just shaking their hand, you know, encouraging brother and sister, even saying a one phrase, how are you doing? Yeah. It makes you know that, hey, my brothers and sisters do care for me. My body of Christ care for me, right? But why don't you do it? Because going back to you know, point number two, you're too selfish. You can't have that selfless way. Right. You know, in order to be a Christian, that can be used by the Lord. As you think about what you reap, what you sow, is God's law, and God will not be mocked. You have to sow with sincerity, and you have to get rid of your selfish ways. And once you start thinking that way, once you behave that way, once you act that way, man, Galatians 6, 7 even though it's such a scary verse, you have some silver lighting because you've done something for the Lord because you love him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We talked about reaping and sowing as a Christian mainly today. It is very important. If you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we heard Brother Fred's testimony last week. Someone who was church goer for 35 years didn't get saved until his teaching and preaching. You could be that person. You could be, you could be church goer for many, many years, but who never really got to save according to the word of God. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says you and I are sinners on our way to hell. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. Because we're born as a sinner, we'll ultimately one day die. But the Bible says after death, there's judgment. The Bible says, but the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murder, whoremonger, sources, idolaters, and all liars. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is second death. You and I included in that group. As sinners, if we do not solve all of our sin problems, how much good work you've ever done, you will burn in hell. That's why God sent his begotten son, Jesus Christ. Romans 5 eight, but God commended his love to us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ came down from heaven, died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. Because the Bible says without shedding of blood, there's remission of sins. If you truly know that you're a sinner on your way to hell, you believe that Jesus is God who died for your sins once and for all, all you have to do is with repenting heart, turning from your ways and turning to God to save you, you just have to trust him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, but God commended his love to us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
If you were to die right now, do you know for sure where you're going? Have you ever trusted Christ and Him alone without relying on any other things, your good works, church attendance, just being born into a church family, but realizing you're a sinner on your way to hell, trusting what Christ has done at Calvary, shedding His precious blood and receiving Him in your heart, not your life, Christ in everybody's life, including the devil, but have you received Him in your heart as your Lord and Savior? If you have any sliver of doubt, one in a trillion, in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and know for sure that you're going to heaven and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my only personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for all my sins on the cross and coming into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed still. If you did that from the bottom of your heart, would you please raise your hand, right, to the testimony to your Lord and Savior. Thank you. You could put your hand down, right? If you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no reason for you to ever worry about burning in hell. The Bible says, but as many as received him in John 1, 12, to them gave it power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 1 John 5, 12, 13, he that has done has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. If you have any questions, if you have any doubts, if you need any more assurance, you know, according to the word of God, you, know, you could talk to me or talk to any of the brethren here. But do not let this go by without you knowing for sure where you're going after you die. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for saving us from hell. Amen. It's such a simple salvation. All we have to do is trust our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to save us from hell. Trust him as our Lord and Savior. And we sometimes neglect how great this salvation is and forget your universal law. And we mock you constantly. And we sow to our flesh constantly, Lord. Help us to get right, Lord God. Help us to be a better testimony to this lost soul out there. And I pray that we'll have a closer relationship with you, Lord. Whatever everyone's going through, I pray that you will resolve it according to your will. Bless the rest of the services today and above all, even so come Lord Jesus. In just let me pray. Amen. Amen.